Hi, this is Tutor Ali. So let's begin with the third domain, which is analysis. It is 35% of your business analyst examination, PMI, PBA. In this domain, what we are doing is looking at a problem, analyzing the problem, breaking down the problem into smaller, more manageable pieces. So the analytical techniques that we are going to cover in today's topic is going to be what is decomposition? Activities involved in decomposition of the total project into work packages what is a work breakdown structure and how can a work breakdown structure be structured as what is 100% rule when it comes to the work breakdown structure and when it comes to the scope of the project what is decomposition used for what is progressive elaboration when it comes to agile proje projects what is rolling wave planning when it comes to agile projects? Create work breakdown structure. We are going to look at the inputs, tools, and techniques and outputs. Then what is dependency analysis? What is gap analysis? What is change impact analysis? What is the requirement traceability matrix and risk analysis tools and techniques. So let's start with the first one is decomposition. Decomposition is a technique used to create the work breakdown structure. Let's see what a work breakdown structure looks like. This is a work breakdown structure. And as you can see over here, it defines the total scope for the project. Everything that needs to be done for the project to be successfully completed. Now in this case, we have a house which is on the top and then we have three different levels. Level one is in green, level two is in blue, and level three is in white. So what we do is start with the house. That is, this is what we are trying to build. And then we are going to break it down into different levels and different tasks that need to be completed for successful completion of the project. If you were working on an IT project or a mechanical project or a management project, one of the things that you would start to build is a work breakdown structure. Primarily, a business analyst would be creating the work breakdown structure and the whole work breakdown structure is going to define the scope of the project. So the business analyst is going to interview, talk to the stakeholders and get and collect all the requirements that need to be satisfied for successful completion of the project. And those requirements, those tasks, those subtasks are going to be put in a graphical format called as the work breakdown structure. and once we have this in graphical format, we are going to show it to the stakeholders, get approval on this, see if they need to add something in here, see if they need to remove something in here, from here. So the work breakdown structure helps us define the scope of the project. It even helps us find the total cost of the project 
it even helps us find us the total schedule of the project. Why and how? Is because when we break down into different levels, we are giving it a budget for each and every task. We will give the amount of time that is required to finish each and every task. And when we go all the way down, which is from the bottom, when we go up, we keep adding up the budget and the time till we get the total cost of the project and we get the total time it takes to finish the project. So this is a very helpful tool that is used by the project team, by the business analysts, by the stakeholders to see what work needs to be done. So in this example of the work breakdown structure, as you can see, we are building a house. Now we have divided the house into three different phases, you can say, where one is foundation of the house, then the internal work of the house, and then the external work of the house. Then the foundation is further broken down or analyzed into two different levels. One is excavation for the foundation, and the other one is the steel erection, where you're going to erect the foundation columns. Now, if you look into here, the excavation is further broken down into two tasks where you are pouring the concrete and curing and stripping the concrete. So like that, we go into steel. The steel work is broken down into three tasks, which is steel columns, joist, and the beams. So these are called as the work packages. And when we are defining the activities, we might further break down these activities into smaller, more manageable components. Once this is done, we have internal work, which is broken down into plumbing and electrical. In plumbing, we are doing uh, rough in plumbing, fixtures, and testing. And in electrical, we are doing rough in electrical, installation, and HVAC. So there's a lot more to this, but this is a high level work breakdown structure of the house construction. And we have external work for the house where we do some masonry work and building finishes. The building finishes is further broken down into ceiling tile, paint walls, put the carpet, etc. Now, when I go down, I am going to calculate how much does each work package take to complete. So the beams is taking me $5,000, the joist is $2,000, then the steel columns is $4,000. This is on level three. When I get onto level two, which is the blue color, I see the total budget for steel erection is 11,000. Basically, I add it up these three down here and I even add like the percent of the work that's five percent of the total work of this whole complete project I can even put in the time it takes to build the steel columns to build the joist to build the beams and then put it up here as in the schedule for steel erection is going to take me 10 to 15 days whatever the number comes to Then now I go up a step where I have excavation and the budget for concrete is 20,000. Budget for curing and stripping is 15,000. So the total excavation is going to cost me $35,000 and it's 20% of the work. And it would be maybe it takes a total of 10 days to do that. And then when I get up to the second level, which is the foundation, it shows the total budget at at 46,000 and the total work from this project is 25% of your whole project. Same thing I'm going to do for the internal work where I will take the plumbing and electrical 
all the way from down here. That's why it's called even bottom up estimating, where we go from the bottom all the way top, and then we keep adding it up till we get a total plumbing budget for $63,000 and work as 30% of our project. Same thing with external work. The total budget when we add it up is 81,000 and work is 30% of the total project. And when we get up on the top where we get to the house construction, now here you see the total budget for the project is $216,000 and that is 100% of the work. So this is one of the things that we were talking about, the 100% rule where you want to cover each and everything and not leave anything out. Okay, so we do have three different levels in this example. It could be four depending on the scenario and how in depth or how detailed your project is. These are numbered accordingly. Level one is numbered in just one digit as you can see or one number one two and three and then we get to the level two now we have two numbers over here which is 1.1 and 1.2 again two numbers over here 2.1 and 2.2 and when we get to the third level we see three numbers over here which is 1.2.1 1.2.2 1.2.3 so on and so forth so just looking at these numbers, I know I'm on the third level. Just looking at these numbers, I know I'm on the second level. And just looking at this number, I know I'm on the first level of the work breakdown structure. Now what you do with this work breakdown structure is you would take this and import it in Microsoft Project. Now this is a Microsoft Project software program. This is what is used by the business analyst and primarily by the project manager. The project manager will use this program to monitor and control the project progress. Because this program will have the durations, will have the start date, will have the finish date, will have the cost, will have the schedule, and as well as the scope that you see over here. And if anything changes from what was planned, then the project manager has to take action to make sure he gets back on the baseline and make sure any updates or changes are made. Okay, so we take the work breakdown structure and if you look over here, these are all the tasks that need to be completed to finish the project. Now, these tasks, now if I go up here, this is, I'm all the way on the top, which is right here. Now, when I open this up, I have different levels. So over here, I have the first level, which is general conditions. Then we have site work, foundation, framing, drying, exterior, interior, landscape, final acceptance. Now I can open further open this up. The general work will have applying for permits. So that's again the second level. Site work, I'm going to open up. Then I see the second level. Foundation, I open up. Then I see the second level and the third level and so on and so forth. Now if you look in the work breakdown structure, I have the duration that is there for every single task that happens on the project. So for the general conditions, I take 21 days. This is my start date and this is my finish date. For the permits, it does, it's zero days because this is a milestone that you can see over here on the right on the Gantt chart. It has zero dates. So it is going to be approved by Monday the 1st. Then we have site work that takes three days. So again, we show the start and the finish. Then the foundation date, 42 days, starts on this day and ends on this day. 
and on the third level you can see in the foundation what all needs to be done you need to excavate the foundation that takes three days form basement walls that takes 13 days place concrete foundation that takes 12 days and you know all these days are going to be added up so over here you see a total of 42 days for the whole foundation and all the scope that needs to be completed while building the foundation on this column you will see some predecessors as to before finishing placing the concrete like you can see over here I need to finish forming the basements okay so so this has so this has predecessors then for clearing the grub and lot I have to finish all these activities over here these activities now let me see if I can move it up a little so you can see the task numbers on the left side so before I get to doing all of this clearing the grub I need to finish these activities 6 7 8 9 10 and 11 so I have to finish all these before I get to that and which is basically I need to get the permit before I start doing any of my site work so these are the predecessors that need to be finished before I get on to my installing the power service installing the underground utilities etc on this column you even have the resource names as to who are the resources and what are the resources that are going to work on this project then if I go on I could add more columns where I could use uh, the actual cost if the cost was assigned to it and see how much it was supposed to actually cost and how much is it costing us and this is what the project manager is going to use throughout the project to manage the cost the scope and the schedule on the right side you see over here is the Gantt chart that you would be using this is easier to read and you see any changes then you will see over here if you are behind the schedule if you are ahead of schedule if you are over the cost if you are under the cost anything related to the baseline any changes we are going to see there as project managers and we have to come in action and try to fix that okay so as you can see over here all these tasks are the ones that were taken from the work breakdown structure so it's very important to have the work breakdown structure and then we import all these tasks with the schedule and the cost into our Microsoft project which is going to be used by the project manager throughout the project to monitor and control the project so that was a description of the work breakdown structure why is it so important how do we do that and the technique that we are using to create the work breakdown structure is called as decomposition where basically I started with the house construction and I broke it down into different levels by using the decomposition technique then I take the foundation which is level one broke it down into level two as to what needs to be done in foundation so I'm decomposing over here breaking it down into smaller more manageable pieces